So guys, Elseworlds Part 1 was just fantastic, bringing in so many elements of the CW superhero shows that I adore, and mixed in with such a crazy story, with two parts still yet to come, so let's dive straight into The Flash's Elseworlds Episode Part 1. <laughs> How's it going people of the Arrowverse? Welcome to my Flash Season 5 Episode 9 review and breakdown, but more importantly this is the Elseworlds Part 1 uh, episode to the crossover with two parts still to come. Uh, the Flash this time did not air on a Tuesday, it got put back to Sunday and that was, you know, natural anyway with how this story is being set up naturally in the crossover. In this first episode, Barry and Oliver went over to Earth 38 so it just wouldn't have made sense if it started off with the Supergirl episode. But honestly guys, I was so happy with this episode for so many different reasons. So before we dive straight into this review and breakdown, be sure to subscribe for more Arrowverse videos just like this as well as Elseworlds reviews for part 2 and part 3 coming in the next couple of days obviously. And of course, if you go on to like this video, be sure to hit that like button as it really does show your support for the channel. So right at the beginning of the crossover, we had our introduction to Dr. John Deegan who seems to be this psychologist giving some kind of theory that everyone in the audience just was not buying at all so they were quick to leave and he was really not happy about that but this is rushing into straight away when the monitor was introduced now the monitor chose him apparently for his vision and he even encouraged him to think big when he gave him the book of reality now this is very very interesting and i know a lot of people may be wondering why is the monitor doing this if it is beyond good and evil well i'm guessing just like how he tested earth 90 and earth 90 failed and we'll be introduced to earth 90's flash very very soon as he was not featured in this episode but i'm guessing he's giving the burden of the book of reality here to dr john deegan uh, so he can royally screw up earth one and if the heroes arise to save the day then that's all good for the monitor because he wants people to face off, I'm guessing, against the Anti-Monitor in what we can only assume is the next crossover. By the way, this was a cool moment, a cool introduction to the Monitor. I mean, I guess you could say that we saw him before all of this with the Earth 90s clip, but we've seen that anyway on the end of each Arrowverse show. Now, of course, this moment in the episode, I'm sure everyone is very familiar with from the promos that they've been releasing up until this crossover, and that is when Oliver wakes up in Barry's apartment and Barry and Diggle were training. Iris probably couldn't be more confused confused as to why her husband has been acting so weirdly. Obviously, reality has completely changed for Iris, but Barry and Oliver are the only ones who realize this, and I just found this so funny. Even though I've seen lots of promo material showing moments of this scene, I still found it really, really funny seeing Candace Patton and Stephen and Mel act alongside each other as kind of husband and wife here. Now, I was really, really happy, and if you've been watching my previous coverage on the Elseworlds crossover, you'll know that I was thinking it would be really good if before they tackle this whole problem, they needed Barry to go out on a typical Flash mission, let's say. Because something that the Flash has to deal with and that maybe Stephen and Mel's Oliver Queen could possibly kind of handle, or at least it would get him on the training wheels of being the Scarlet Speedster since, for now at least, he is stuck with these powers and that is exactly what they did. I definitely felt like it was quite a bodge job of Oliver Queen, but somehow he got through it, but he did run past multiple blocks trying to get where he was going to, as Cisco pointed out, and when he was just running around, he kept bumping into things, and I was kind of surprised how he could throw a lightning bolt. There was a couple of things with powers this episode, which I kind of feel... For the sake of the plot, they skipped over. There was no way I feel like Oliver Queen could know how to throw a lightning bolt where in previous seasons, that took Barry quite a while to learn how to do, as well as FaZe. Now, they have skipped over this as well. I mean, Jessica Parker Kennedy's Nora Allen in episode one of The Flash season five learned how to FaZe pretty quickly under pressure as well. But I'm really not going to nitpick on that. It was just really funny seeing all of this anyway. I was also very happy that they did the exact same thing for Barry as the Green Arrow. He went on his own little mission as well uh, with Diggle. He rushed in and absolutely kicked ass. Was really impressed with himself. I mean, I would be as well if I was just given those abilities. So Barry was absolutely loving that as well. And they're both slowly learning their new roles as the Flash and the Green Arrow. 
Now, even during the moments that I've already spoken about in this review so far, we saw red skies all over Central City and places like that. Now, this was mentioned throughout this crossover episode, but those red skies are obviously a reference to the crisis on Infinite Earths, red skies or the 2024 crisis, Flash goes missing, red skies, blah, blah, blah. Now, I don't think that the crisis on Infinite Earths thing is happening now. They're definitely insinuating and as Mark Guggenheim said, laying the groundwork for the next crossover. So it's interesting interesting to see that they've put the red skies in this crossover already but I think that's definitely got something to do with the book and what that can do and when the book is in effect it has this side effect of the red skies clouding over possibly the subjects of what has been changed so like Oliver and Barry and that is definitely what Cisco insinuated as well so maybe in 2024 a very similar thing happens possibly with the anti-monitors effect and arrival on that whole crisis on infinite earth storyline I'm just wondering if they're trying to link it that way because obviously this crossover we're not getting the actual crisis on infinite earths itself or at least i don't think so i mean that would be insanely surprising if they somehow brought the crisis here for this crossover already i definitely think that this is just a setup with the monitor trying to find an earth that will work against the anti-monitor. Now, Perry and Oliver go to Star Labs to try and ask for their help, but typically they do not believe it. And there was quite a few funny jokes that I really appreciated in moments like this. Uh, for example, Iris was saying Barry really isn't her type. I found it fairly interesting as well when Iris revealed to Oliver that Felicity rang her to bitch about, you know, the whole Oliver situation where he just, you know, took a deal without informing Felicity and so ended up in slab side. And that seemed to be a very interesting thing that I am very intrigued to see if he will mention uh, in the back half of Arrow Season 7 that, you know, he learned all of this information from Iris about their phone call, which obviously Oliver didn't know anything about until now. We also got that funny line about nanites, courtesy of Ray Palmer when he got knocked out, uh, which is a complete reference to the reverse flash way back in Season 1, when Oliver used that very line on the reverse flash and now it's being used on him. Now, when they're both in the pipeline, this was yet another funny moment. Obviously, Barry came up with the idea of going to Earth 38 so they could get people to vouch for who they really are like Kara but this was really really funny because Barry revealed that there's a toilet in the pipeline which has been a long question uh, for the people who are actually locked in there over the flashes seasons first of all it was like how do they eat then they teased that they got delivered like big belly burger this whole time but how did they go to the toilet so that was like a little inbuilt thing in the wall which was pretty funny as i mentioned briefly earlier with scenes going on at the same time here cisco said that he thinks all of this is linked to the red skies and that is probably the only anomaly that they could pick up in terms of detecting what could be wrong with barry and oliver here the only thing that is present is those red skies because they gave them like the tachyon test and everything else i also appreciated that west allen moment uh, between barry and iris where he kind of made her believe or made her realize that this is her Barry. Something in her told herself that, okay, maybe something is out of whack here, despite my reality being that this isn't my Barry. Although I didn't really like the West Allen scene towards the end, it did just seem a bit too unnecessary with the whole, oh, don't become Oliver Queen. It was just a bit like, well, of course he won't, but let's just chuck a West Allen scene in there for the sake of it. But this one was pretty sweet. Now, after all of this, guys, we went to Smallville and when they panned into Smallville, we got that Smallville theme song and I honestly did get chills. Uh, my eyes teared up. I absolutely loved it. It was just fantastic. Now, people are saying that this confirms that Earth 38 is Smallville's Earth. That is not the case. This honestly is just a fan service-y kind of reference there. Uh, but anyway, really, really, really happy with Elizabeth Tulock as Lois Lane. I've watched all five seasons of Grimm and that's where I, I know her best from uh, so when I found out she was coming to the role of Lois Lane I was very excited and she honestly really didn't disappoint she really seems like the Lois Lane of Superman outgoing funny smart courageous everything we already got just from that scene she seems really kind of confident not overconfident but a perfect confidence level for Lois Lane. I, I trust you guys kind of know what I'm on about, if you know what I'm on about. But she was really, really good, really funny, and I loved it. Of course, more comedy here, like Oliver puffing out his chest when he met Superman. Like, this comedy wasn't over, like, bored or anything like that. It was just perfect. But anyway, because of Amazo having been accidentally activated, this is where he steals Killer Frost's powers. The scene was going on at the same time. They also linked that it was like a hybrid Mirakuru thing that allows him to 
to copy the powers of other metahumans, which is a pretty cool explanation for it, I suppose. But we will get into Amazo a little bit later, but I really, really found it funny as well when Barry and Oliver were training on the Kent farm. Uh, Barry finally, finally got his revenge for uh, Oliver previously uh, putting two arrows into his back. In this crossover, Barry has finally done that to Oliver. He even said that I've been waiting four years for that. Now this turned into a little bit of a ten temper tantrum for Oliver saying that he did that for a reason to teach Barry a lesson and Barry just did it for a laugh. As I'll keep saying, Lois really made me laugh in this moment saying deck in Barry because she thinks that Oliver's a jerk. So it just kind of gives off the fact that, you know, Oliver always comes across as, as a jerk to most people at first until you get to know him. Now I'm pretty sure Ralph normally embodies what the audience thinks quite a lot of the time um, and he did that perfectly here he was just like all of this stuff is basically happening and, it, and it's not even Tuesday and I was just like damn you're completely right now Cisco as well in the crossover and I thought this was very predictable because I mentioned this before I did say what if Cisco is aware about the reality being changed now even though that was incorrect and reality was still changed for him I was definitely glad with my thinking that they would throw some kind of thing in with his vibe powers that would tell him otherwise and that is exactly what happened with the monitor I think the monitor said the line of something like you're best off giving up now or something like that But either way just that line from the monitor just gave me that thought that the monitor is really trying to egg on this earth Really try and tease its destruction and just make them think that they're going to fail So they'll rise up stronger and up to the challenge of the anti-monitor But anyway when Cisco arrives at the Kent farm and tells them that they need help with Amazo I just was so excited at this moment because Clark ripped open his shirt saw the Superman logo Everyone was coming over to team up against Amazo and this moment was just so so cool like the superhero team up versus Amazo with everyone was just absolutely brilliant by this point Amazo did replicate everyone's powers and it was just a bit like holy crap how are they going to stop this if he's got everyone's freaking powers now this superhero team up guys was definitely the highlight of the episode for me i know a lot of people would prefer the other parts in the episode and i loved every part of it but i think it's just a fact of seeing superman kara the green arrow the flash and everyone like that team up albeit the fact that the flash and the green arrow aren't who they're truly meant to be but i don't know i think it's just seeing superman on earth one having these characters interact was such a treat against amazo i thought the effects in the cgi was really Really acceptable it wasn't like amazing but it wasn't really bad and it wasn't sticking out like a sore thumb so I was absolutely happy uh, with how the effects were I loved how Oliver was distracting Amazo but either way it all led up until this moment where Cisco came up with a virus that would uh, shut down Amazo and that moment from Grant I, I didn't know if he could pull it off but it was very very good when he truly embraced uh, the character of Oliver Queen and the Green Arrow where it was just like you have failed this city I have to admit that was pretty epic for Barry and I suppose that's where the whole concerns from Iris came on in that other West Allen moment towards the end of this episode. But, you know, I just still think, okay, maybe they're embracing each other's role and reality has changed and they're trying to point out, uh, you know, oh, but what if they embrace the roles too much? But come on, like, they'll be fine. But I thought that was a really, really cool Green Arrow moment. And that just even shows that Grant Gustin can pull off that intimidating Green Arrow kind of line. And I really dig that. But this is the moment in the crossover that sets up just that main story anyway, because this whole crossover first episode has been just a bit of fun. Uh, our heroes discovering these other identities to themselves and then everyone meeting Superman and gang Lois Lane and figuring out basically the big, big problem right at the end of the episode. Everything else I feel was just set up for fun and just setting up the identity storyline. But now Cisco shares a vibe with the Flash and Oliver. And in this moment, the Monitor even knows that they can see, which I thought was a really cool moment. Obviously, the Monitor is a really OP kind of being, overseeing the universe, monitoring the universe even. So when the Monitor knew that vibe was like vibing this moment and Barry and Oliver were there seeing it as well. I like how the Monitor chucked in that line of saying, I didn't think the men of this earth had that capacity but either way you can't stop what's coming now this is all about the test obviously i think that he was yeah as he said himself he was kind of pleasantly surprised that they could do this and have the power to do that so maybe he's starting to think himself oh maybe this is the earth if out of any earth that might stand the trial and test that dr destiny will give this earth earth one which the monitor is allowing but as i said 
probably just for the sake of if this earth can rise to stop Dr. Destiny, which he set up in motion, all for the purpose of if they can, then surely, hopefully, in fact, they can stop the Anti-Monitor. And then, of course, guys, we had Batwoman teased at the very end because, you know, as Oliver said, we need to head to Gotham City, and that is what the whole of the next episode of the crossover will be about. It will be uh, Arrow's episode where they go to Gotham City, meet Batwoman, go to Arkham Asylum, meet Dr. John Deegan, and then the crossover story will be very, very much so deeply delved in by then and we're going to find out a lot more to do i'm thinking with the monitor's motivations and why he's doing what he's doing we're probably going to meet earth 90s flash he's going to warn that a crisis is coming it's going to be so so cool guys especially with the introduction of ruby rose as batwoman some batman references for sure since he's been missing for three years by this point in the arrowverse so i can't wait for everything like that this crossover is just Honestly, I think the best one to date already. And that is, you could say, too premature. But what I mean is the grand scale of story that they've set up already compared to previous crossover. It's more, it's, it's a lot more than just, oh, an alien invasion. Oh, this has happened. This is mother freaking Crisis on Infinite Earths level stuff. At least a setup for it. So obviously amongst the perfect comedy and humor that I really liked, it was just so great seeing Superman team up with the other heroes. Just so comic booky there. And also the universal stakes that are at cost now with the monitor getting involved i think that's just what is making this crossover so big for me personally but i would love to know your thoughts as i said down in the comments below give that like button a hit so you can show your support for the channel and to let me know if you enjoyed this episode of the crossover links as always are in the description down below to follow me on social media and other places like that but thank you so much for watching guys i hope you have a lovely rest of your day and i hope you're enjoying the crossover as much as me and i can't wait for part two so of course stick around for tomorrow's review on that one and the next day but other than that guys take care goodbye